on, love. Hurry up. Come on, we're going to miss the train. Quick. I thought Mum said we were getting a taxi. Oh, we're too good for the train now, are we? Yeah. Take that. That'll tide you over, doesn't it? Thanks, Dad. And anyway, it's early. So with a bit of luck, we might have the train to ourselves, eh? Hey. Watch what you're doing, will you? Sorry, sorry, it's OK, it doesn't matter. You're right. Okay, the guard will find her. Come on. What if they don't? Go on then, just be quick. I'm watching you, Jess, quick as you can. Miss? <coughs> Jess! Jessie! Star witness, you can do better than that. All right. Jessie seemed to think she had boarded the train the same time we did. Jessie? How many times? Jessie, my eldest. Yes, I know that. I just didn't know you had her with you. She sings in the choir up at St. Teresa's. Cameras? No, nothing yet. Injury. She's got to uh, stab her into the lower back. What is it the same training? Muggers tend to confront you. Oh, she's cash rich. So not a mugging. Any fights on the train? Well, it wouldn't surprise us. They were all out this evening. Margaret who? Margaret, uh, Krzyzewski. Central Station to Mardle. She's a bit posh for Mardle, isn't she? I'm going to have to talk to your lass. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But just wait till the morning, will you? As a favour. Come on, love. Hey, you know, I hate to ask, love, but I gather our Jesse saw the victim get on the train. No, I told him to get a taxi. But you know how, Joe. Nothing comes between him and a ten pound note. My mistake. Lock him up, somebody. Cases like this, always the off duty copper. Who's this? Pathologist. Marcus Summer, the new guy. See you tomorrow, Pat. Lucky fella. The body's on the train if you care to take a look. Ryan! 
Give your brother a shout for me there, now, will you? I've got guests in the conservatory. Ryan! Oi. What are you doing? Are you doing his Matt's homework for him again? No. Chloe? It's just this one. How is he going to get on if you keep doing his homework for him? Anyway, how do you get so rich? Babysitting. That is hilarious. Who'd let him loose on a baby? Right, how are you going to get by if you don't do your own work, huh? Just get off my back, please. Or at least read a book. It won't kill you. I read. Yeah? Read that. Bathroom freshener. It's the same difference. <laughs> yes, give us that money. Give us the money. Mum! Pack it in the pair of you. <sighs> Toss it. Serves you right. Kate Darrow. I'll give the kids a lift in. They missed the bus. Second time this week. You're on a hat-trick. Don't blame me. The music teacher here forgot his coffin. <laughs> Double bass. Sorry. You want me to stay? No, no, it's fine. All righty, I'll call you. All right, come on, you two. It's just yet. They were very fond of Margaret. Is that your husband? Stuart. No, no, he's my fiancé. He's a teacher at the kids' school. Kate, why don't you show us Margaret's room? Sure, yeah. I was left the house ten years ago by an aunt after my husband died. Margaret was sort of sitting tenant. It's her bright idea to turn it into a guest house. They extended the train line and people said Margaret was on the up. Was Margaret living here? Oh, since forever. 1980 something. She was my anchor. She, she helped with the accounts, bookkeeping, that was her thing. And practically raised the kids when I was off running for World Tour's mum. Ryan used to call her mum, as they do. Kruszewski. She wasn't Polish or anything, no. She married a fellow from Krakow. Before my time, and it didn't last. Oh, was he still local? I don't think so. Have you any idea why Margaret was heading into town? Who she was seeing, or...? No, I didn't know she'd gone out. Did she talk to you about anything on her mind? Any trouble she might be in? It, it was an accident, though, right? Well, we don't know yet. Anyway, there was never any trouble Margaret couldn't sort out. If you didn't find her here, she was at Hollypool House. The shelter for vulnerable women, Margaret's flock. <laughs> Chloe said that's where I'll end up. She had such nice manners, Margaret. She made you feel very safe up here. Are we decent? I heard voices. This is George. George's one of our most loyal guests. One of? I've been coming here how long? Eight. Eight years, George. Margaret never raised a voice. Always the most tremendous help if needed. This outward calm and generosity, but, well, I always like to think of her as some sort of Cold War spy, an heir of things held back. Perhaps it was just a name, Krzyzewski. Well, that's my stock in trade, you see, spy novels. George is a rep for publishers, aren't you, love? Yes, words are my world. <laughs> I've been up in Scotland doing my rounds, back home to North Ants George. after luncheon. Oh, I'm so stupid. Um, you sit yourself down, love. I'll put the kettle on. George, you don't know why Margaret went into town yesterday? No, no, no. Oh, um, here's my card, if for uh, any reason. So what do you think? Move out here with the kids? More room, fresh air?
joking, aren't you? Don't be so tight. No. Come on, just give no. us a drink. Come on. No. No, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Oh, Krushevsky, what was she doing stuck in that house 30 odd years? There's something about that set that felt very weird. What, weird, eerie? Or what? Oh, weird. Not familiar. Don't be Somebody. The train? Please, please. Gary, would you put the lady out, please? Come Thank on, you. Get, Joking, Come get on. up. Get up, please. Get up, please. Crap pub, anyway. Take that cool with you. I'm sorry I'm not much use. Now, well, we get to round around up the alibis of the family and the guests. We do. What? You sleep on the sofa? No. Hmm? Where's the foot on, actually? How is, um... Jessie? Yeah, Jessie. She'll get there. We will have to talk to her. Yeah. I don't know. Any sign of a struggle? No. Single incision. Here. It's a long, slim blade. And should have felt it. No great discomfort. Subcutaneous fat closes over the wound, so not much bleeding. Not much to see. Oh, and you got your murder weapon yet? Nope. OK. Well, the wound has a little kink in it in the flesh. Meaning? So did the blade. But the murder weapon has a kink. Partially broken edge. But how do you stab someone in the back who's sitting down? Hmm. That, my love, is a riddle wrapped in a mystery. You know, how does it go? Enigma. Inside an enigma. That's right. You're welcome. Anything else? Cancer. First in the pancreas, then spread to the bowel. So game over. She was into the last weeks. Thank you. What are you looking so pleased about? Well, it's better than the last one, isn't it? Hey, you remember me, love? Mussolini? <laughs> Who? You had questions? That woman on the train, love. You saw her, didn't you? Was there anyone with her? No. Love? She smiled at me. What, love? She smiled at me. She was cold. I know.
looking at? It's the kids' mobile phone footage. Is that her? Margaret? Alive at 7.51. Train just left Central Station. So, Margaret was stabbed somewhere between Central Station and Cartlington. So, crowded train. Then I mean, what happened? But some piss head after a seat got in the way of a fight. Hmm? Wrong place, wrong time. Mistaken identity. I mean, the knife went into her lower back, so she'd need to be standing. Mom, lab report. Six-inch lock knife. Some kids found it in an estuary near model. That mom brought it in this morning. And? Well, it's got a broken edge. It's a physical fit? Yeah, it's a perfect match. Photos? Yeah, yeah. Model. So potentially a local. It's a small town. So they may have known her. And our victim has an ex-husband. Mom. Pavel Krzyzewski. I want him found. I mean, where was he? Hmm? Did they get on? And Kenny, chase up the murder weapon. Uh, you'll want to hear this. So let me just get this straight. My victim was here Thursday to see you. Yeah, you're quite correct. I saw, saw a lot oh, there. Uh, yep, see. here she is. Yes, signed in at five to five. Yep, and then, and then as you can see, yep, she left signed it out 20, at 20 to six. So she sat here in our reception for 45 minutes and then left again. Well, without... I, sorry, as, as I said, I were on training at the time doing my IT skills. Huh? Um, obviously, I, I did arrange for a follow-up appointment, uh, but the lady didn't attend, so... Uh, was... No, pet. She was held up at the morgue. Oh. So well, how was it? What? Sorry. You the course, the IT. Oh, yeah. No, oh, yeah, that was really good. Yeah, it was in one ear, out the other. With so all... you've no idea why Margaret made that appointment? Um, no, I don't. Sorry. But she'd have phoned the station to make the appointment. Yes. So you all would have recorded the call? For training purposes. Yes, I believe they would. So? Shall I get it? Take away your gears. And can I ask what's the nature of the appointment? I, I, I can't say over the phone. Well, it's just it would help if you need to talk to anyone with the right experience. Oh, well, if we could just sit down, I, I think, go through our options. Very well. And anything that's said will be taken in strictest confidence. She came into town to talk to us. Christ. Local killer. Targeted attack, surely. Someone stabbed her because of... Aye, for whatever it was she was going to say. It's a hypothesis. Oh, sheer bloody coincidence. She doesn't sound like I thought she would. Yeah? What does she sound like? Smaller. Let's see what they say at this woman's shelter. Right then, who wants the brontosaurus, eh? No, no, wait there, just wait a second, love. I'm gonna make you one, don't worry, all right? A pound each includes free raffle tickets. No concessions, I'm afraid. Jane Robinson. Can you manage for a bit, love? Yeah. So how many people you got here? We take all comers. Any women with no home to go to. Even vulnerable youngsters like our Emily here. Hello. Just out of foster care. We're learning to stand up to peer pressure. And all that entails. Lemonade. No, you're all right. Thanks. No, go on. I'll have it, love. Thanks. Do they know? About poor Margaret. Mm. Aye. Some of them were quite dependent, which I don't encourage. Well, why not? Here, go do your worst. I'm just going to do one, okay? Just one. It's 
a fight for a pop, all proceeds go to this place. It's Mum's comeback CD. You should be very proud. One way of putting it. It's so good to get her out of the house. She's taking it very hard. I bet you will. It's more of a shock. Ryan was always a favourite. Much good I did him. Nah, they weren't any favourites. Yeah, right. Says the man who hardly knew her. <laughs> okay, fair point. Go on, get lost. Margaret? Mm. Well, if there was trouble, she wouldn't make a song and dance. Though I must say, these past weeks, she did seem more than usually head up. Who? Oh. One of my women, Dee Sinton. First, we had money going missing from pockets. Next thing after that, I discovered this. She'd been having cards printed, you see. She actually printed our phone number from here at the house. So I handed her back to social services, which Margaret saw some great desertion. Ah, oh, well, it can't be easy. Oh. What's up with you? What now? Come on, what's up with you? Oi. she came into the station. Something on her conscience. The killer wanted to keep buried. Last confession? No, but what? What are you smiling at? Are you sure you weren't brought up a Catholic? <laughs> no higher beings for me, pet, except raptors. <laughs> so I worked out why Kate Darrow seemed so familiar yesterday. Yeah? Katie Guthrie, White Summer Moon. It's her. It's the same woman. Celine loves that song. She got an alibi? Yeah. She was rehearsing in the city. Stuart gave her a lift home. Oh, so what's this? Your special song, is it? Yeah. We don't have a special song. No? New CD. You'll be wanting the afternoon off. Mm. Well, I'm sorry, pet. I'm impounding this music for police purposes. <laughs> I just wish you gave us a little... Where we're going, anyway? Round up the last of Margaret's flock. on the roof, falling off with any luck. Excuse us, Lord. Do you see Ivera Stanhope? Dear Joe Ashworth. Margaret Kruszewski. Eh? How are you? Could you tell us what you were doing on Thursday evening, love? Thursday? What? what? Well, today's Sunday, love, so three nights ago. Pub? City. I met a fella. Name? Jason. And he'll vouch for you, will he? Oh, are you? Yeah. You getting a number? No. How'd you get home, love? Bus? Train? Who says I got home? I can't help it if the lad's like what I do for him, I can. Did you know her well, would you say? Who? Margaret. We're all friends, yeah. When was the last time you saw her? A couple of weeks back. Did she say anything to you about going to the police at all? 
No. I already told that slag up at Olipo I'm no thief. Oh, is the missing money? I said to her, I said I was brought up honest and decent with dignity. Listen, this is my card if you... It's a quid, eh? For the bus. We're in somewhere nice. City. Places to be, folks to meet. Oh, early start. Give her the quid. Cheers. Your love. It's the lady. The lady on the train. Oh, what's that? A coat. But she wasn't wearing a coat. Is that why she was cold? Someone had taken her coat. Joe. Decent and lied to us. She was on that train. She must have been. She went home wearing a victim's coat. So is that what this was? A fight over a coat? Edwards, how are we doing with the murder weapon? Dead end so far. It's a standard lock knife. The spec's at least ten years old. Oh, would D have carried a knife? No protection? Ma'am, we've got her. So how is your Jess? Celine's keeping her off school for a bit. Yeah? Family liaison put us in touch with a counsellor. Oh, we're OK with that. Of course, if it helps. What's going on? Oh, yeah, All right, love, that's enough. Come on, out you come. Nice fella here in a uniform. Come on, give him your coat. There's a good girl. Oh, we've had a hell of a job finding you. And off we run, Mordel. Where are you going now, love? Anything to get away from you. Oh, nothing for you up there, love. You just leave me alone. Here you are, bud. Take this. I'm not wearing that. It seems a jellyfish. <laughs> she with you two? You look like the spit this morning. Looking a bit worse for wear. How she come by that shiner? She can talk for herself. Bang me head. Mom. Oh, well, what have we here? Thursday evening, you met Margaret on the train. Aye, if you say so. Why didn't you say so before? I was hungry. I can't think when I'm hungry. Oh, well, there you go, love. I'm not eating your litter. You met Margaret on the train and went home wearing her coat. I was cold. She gave it me. Oh, I find that hard to believe. If you knew her, she was a proper lady. You followed her onto the train, Margaret, your friend. You had this stupid fight. No. You were as high as a kite, your head full of that white powder you had in your pocket. I've never even seen that before. I don't know what that is. So you couldn't be held to account because you didn't know what you were doing. She gave me her coat. She was always looking out for folk. OK, she gave you the coat. Then what? She got out. 
Where? Mount Bank. Mm. No, she was still on the train. Can you get her a sandwich, will you? What? Oh, hello, Lord. No, that's all right. I'll come over. It's my son. His way of working things through, I guess. You had something for me? Yes. This came and it looked semi-official. When you thought of me. Thanks. And we're moving on. Oh. With Stuart? Yes, yeah. Closer to town. For the kids. Oh. Mm -hmm. New school. Better group of friends, hopefully. And with all this going on... Well, something snapped. Hmm. Need to get somebody to manage this place, of course, but I'll be glad to see the back of it. Never really felt like mine. She kept us here, I suppose. No, Margaret. Mm. She never would have moved. Too many memories. If you've got time, I could show you something. Yeah. I was clearing out some drawers, and I came across this. Stuart said not to bother you with it. When was this? Mid-80s, I reckon. Well, uh... Margaret. Stunning, isn't she? Mm. Look, uh, do you recognise him? Oh, it's the boatman. That's right. Malcolm Kenridge. And who's this? Uh, Val Furlow. She used to run the schooner, the pub. And Margaret's husband, Pavel? No, he was off the scene by then. So who's this? I think that must be Ricky Furlow. He used to help his mum at the pub. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Kate. I heard your CD on the way over. Oh, yes. Oh, it's... Uh... Look, I'm sorry, I don't mean to pry, but there's a song on it. God help this house. The mood he's in. Aye. I didn't have the best of marriages. He hit you. Well, didn't like me singing the band. For independence of any kind, really. I never stood up to him. My invisible wall, Margaret calls it. Called it. Anyway, he's he's dead now. He died on the rigs. Ryan was six, Chloe four. Oh. I don't think I would have picked up a guitar again if it wasn't for Stuart. Sorry, how did you get onto this? Oh no, no, I just wondered. I mean, you look at Margaret. Mm? The world at her feet, and she spends her whole life here in Model. Devoted her life to her flock. Yeah. Strange, isn't it? Mm. Memories, I suppose. Was that your connection? I mean, was she knocked about by her husband, as it were? She came into the station the day she died. Really? Mm. Missed her appointment, though. Oh. And I just wondered, maybe she confided in you. We've not been able to trace the husband. There's no record of him ever being divorced. It's a puzzle. Well, she was a very private person. Cold War spy. <laughs> oh, come on. Help me here. She hated him. Pavel, she hated him. He was abusive. Yes. Physically abusive. Yes. 
I wonder what happened to him. May I borrow this? Forensics drew a blank in D. Sinton's flat. No blood spatter on the clothes, nothing to link her with any knife attack. What about the coat? No blood spatter, no puncture wound. It's not even torn. So, do we charge her? We can get her with a possession. Ma'am? Let her go. What about the ex-husband, Pavel? I want him found priority. Uh, I we're uh, looking into that. There's no Pavel Krasevsky in the region. Would you like us to broaden the search, if you like? Yes, I like. He was violent to her, do you understand? Someone must know where he is. It's me, love. It's a simple enough question. Did she fall or was she pushed? Definitely one of the two. Kenny? No witnesses. Not yet. If she was pushed, you would have seen them, surely. No, I was too late. She was dead before I got here. Any prints on the cash? On their twenties. Yeah, in the bedsit. At Joe. There's plenty. We're looking for matches now. Yeah, how much was there? Sixty quid. So with uh, thirty-seven from the off-license receipt, that's nigh on a hundred quid. So? You do know how she made a living, that woman. Hmm. <sighs> Ten quid, five quid a girl, one drink at a time. So how come she's got a hundred? Hmm. Who gave her that money? Should have charged her with possession. And she wouldn't be stuck here with a pin through her, would she? So what happens now? Uh, low profile. With any luck, she'll eat her own fist. And that'll leave us free to get on with her day. Mom? What did you just call me? No, I didn't. I'm sorry. I... Mom? God in heaven, Joe. Look, things are just a bit mental here. Time, Joe? Oh, shit. I've got our daughter with me. We're ready for appointment with a counsellor, and you're not here. Will you put her on? See you.
Come along. Where's Dad? He'll catch us up. This wasn't just some charity case. This was a real friendship going back 30 years. I mean, Dee, look at her. She looks like she's on her way to Sunday school. So how did that turn into this? Look. What? I gotta go. Okay. What's simple as that? No catch. What am I, bully? Hey, you can dump it all on me if it makes you feel any better. At the end of the day, not me keeps you here. You're here because you want to be. Half the stuff he had up here. I can't tell you. Bagged it up with the toxic waste. All topsy. Come on, I've got to get going. I'm moving on my stuff in. My predecessor. Sit down, please. Well, he was one hell of a guy. Oh. What was he? Boy racer type? Who, oh, Billy? Old man with delusions of Steve McQueen. Towering inferno. Bullet. Nice. So, big sip, that's it. Death by natural causes. She fell off a roof. She was on a bender, tank full of booze, no sign of any struggle. What, suicide? Not even. Massive coronary. Victim staggers off the roof, head first, didn't even try and break her fall. I'll need a second opinion. Of course you will. You're not drinking? I've only got the one mug. Oh, well, there you go. Go on. I'll be gone in a tick. To your woman. Mm. To D. You didn't know her? No, hardly. She was a lost cause. Shouldn't really care, should I? Do I know you? Oh, Holly Pool, Lemonade. Who are your mates? What do you care? You're not my mother. There, it's enough of that. I'm sick of people. I'm sick of people trying to run my life. Yeah, calm down, love. Yeah, eat. No chance. I'm on a diet. Oh, good for you. No, it's good to look after your figure. It's very nice. Ta. Anyway, who'd want to run your life? Need the red looking at. Oh, lady up at Hollypool. Jane. Mm. I hear and that. Who, Margaret? Didn't we think much of her? No, we didn't. No, never trust a do good array. I was making people do stuff and. What stuff? 
Nothing. What stuff? You know, you trust them, you open up to them. In the end, they just use you. There are people you can trust. You want me to come in with you? No, I don't need you. Hey, if you need my help, love. Boy, trouble. Thanks very much. Chef. Ma'am. That invoice from Margaret's solicitor, I've gotten hold of him. And? And she made a will. Uh, she had 50,000 saved. 50,000? What was that, family money? Or no, no, the family had nothing to do with her after she married her husband. No, I got the impression she saved it up. She did some bookkeeping, I think she said. Of course. So, 10,000 to her friend Kate Darrow. Ah, an investment in musical talent. Yeah. Nothing for the kids, Chloe, Ryan. No, she didn't mention them, why? Oh, the reason. Go on. 10 more to Hollypool House, the... Ah, as in a, a charity, yeah, I know. And 30,000 to a Deirdre Sinton. D. Yeah. Two dear recent and a friend I once hurt. I was hoping you could tell me, to be honest. The money was to be handled by a third party to administer funds on behalf and to... Do what he can to assist her. Yeah. So who's the third party? Next para down. Malton Kenrich. Right? Where's Markham? He's got the island. Shouldn't you be at school? And what's it to you? Oh, nothing at all, pet. You carry on. We're not waiting. Margaret said once, could I keep an eye on D? And that's it. Well, you're in her will. News to me. You should get back. Tide's going out. Do you know she was ill at all? No, I hardly knew her, I told you. And Ryan? She asked you to keep an eye on him and all. No, no, man, that was Kate, his mum. Why? Steady him, I suppose. Boy's without a father. I do what I can. Try to keep him occupied. Wait here. Margaret's murder Thursday night. Mm, I was out and about. Up the estuary, working. Oh, fishing bait. Logan, aye. 50,000 that woman had salted away. Where from, do you know? No idea. Like I say, I hardly, I hardly knew her. Yet here you are, the pair of you, 30 years ago. Where'd you get this? And D. Look, she's there and all. Mm. Shy thing. I should have. 
I should have kept a better eye on her. Mm. What's her story, Malcolm? What happened to her? I'll tell you one thing. That black eye she had, she didn't walk into any old lamppost, did she? Well, someone give her a slap. Oh. I saw her getting out of a car. Whose car? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear George. Happy birthday to you. Hey! Come on, birthday boy. Decent. I swear, I didn't kill her. I swear, I swear. Oh, and I'm supposed to take you at your word. I mean, the last time I saw you, you told us you were, what was it? Home. Norwich, wasn't it? Mm. Oh, thanks. I did. I set off. I called Sandra at Weatherby, the motorway stop. She said, don't come home. I don't want to see you. I'm moving out, you see. Twelve years now, this. Mm. So, I turned the car around. I'm back into town by tea. Well, you're bumped into D. Sinton. Buy us a drink. <laughs> it's oddly reassuring to see someone in a worse pickle. Mm. So why do you hit her, George? No. Yes. No. Yes. I, I was just trying to do a good deed, just trying to get oh. her home in one piece. My God, I had no designs on that creature, as I told her. At which point she became pretty abusive. And? I may have struck out in self-defence. And the next day? Hmm? Come on. You gave her a hundred pounds. Your prints are all over the money, George. Well, uh, I didn't want a misunderstanding being blown out of proportion. Oh, hush money. Like in one of your spy novels. Mum? Ah, here we are. One hundred pounds drawn from a cash machine. Eight minutes past four yesterday afternoon. She went straight down the off-licence, drank forty quids worth of booze, heart went pop, now she's dead. I feel sick again. Stick him in the cells. Charge him with assault. And check his alibi for the night of Margaret's death. Will do, Mark. Look at him. Old friends. A friend I once heard. Mum. Mum. Valerie Farlow? The old landlady at the schooner, eh? Still living, apparently. Address? Yep. No, I don't see it. Some old photograph. What does it prove? Go on, spit it out. But these symptoms got no bearing on the murder. She was a drunk with a bad heart. So what? Ah, oh, come on. I'm in the buzzer. Valerie Furlow. Where is she? Here, what, love? The nurse. Always late. Sour, black lass. Now, I'm DCI Vera Stanhope, love. This is DS Ashworth. Now, you used to run the schooner in. Here you are. This here, your son, Ricky. Right. So, where's Ricky now? Looking right at you. Oh, okay. 
So where is he now? We lost touch. Margaret Kraszewski, remember her? Oh, much admired she like that. I hear she turned into Mother Teresa. Or well, somebody's got to do it. And her pet mouse. Ah, oh, well, that's decent, and you'd have known her back in the day. Hardly. She and Margaret friends. Our neighbours. But she used to live on Harbour Street, near Margaret. Yeah. She had digs in the same house on the ground floor. She was on a typing course somewhere in town, I think it were. What happened to Dee? Hmm? Did she get hurt in some way? Because of Margaret. It was all long ago. Why? What's wrong? Margaret has been murdered. She had a husband we're trying to locate. Polish. Mm, Pavel. Now, I heard he used to knock her about a bit. Did he? Mm. Well, these foreign fellas. Now, where am I find him? Cleared off, I expect, like half this town. Thanks, love. Oh, this uh, photo. Who took it? You remember? Young lad, big curly locks. One of Margaret's callers, you might say. Have a name? Musician fella. Had a great big double bass. Big as a bloody coffin. met her when? Stuart? Uh, she worked as a... Well, she was... A prostitute? Well, that's not a word I would use. She had a small group of people who she saw. Look, I, I, I know how that sounds out loud, as it were. Yeah, but you used to visit her, as it were. Yes. I've been the same room. Marianne. What? It was her little joke. No working name. Mrs. T was in Downing Street, so Margaret was off limits. So we called her Marianne. Anyhow, six months rolled by and the visits ended. And then, God, years later, I met Kate, and then she said she lived out in Mardle. No idea Margaret would still be here. And Margaret never led on. No. No, she wouldn't. Kate would have been destroyed. You're not gonna tell her. Oh, best coming from you, pet. A sex worker. Oh, bless, he's all shocked, aren't you, pet? Ah, oh, well, at least we know how she saved the 50,000. There's no way that's why she was going to the police. They got her passed out in the open before she died. Well, the way I see it is we've got a real link here, haven't we? Oh, have we? Well, they were both tarts, weren't they? Oh, so suddenly there's a woman hater on the loose. Killer of prostitutes. Jack the Ripper, slumming it in Mardle. Anyway, isn't it you lot keep reminding me Dee died of a heart attack? OK, Stuart. Hmm? Night of Margaret's death, where was he? He was working late at the school. He drove Kate home from the city about 8.30. Play that again. Look 
look at her. What if? I mean, is it possible? She could already be dead. What? I mean, look at her. If she's... Oh, God, if she's dead, sat there. She wasn't stabbed at Portland. No, stabbed before. Dee said Margaret got off the train, but what if she just switched carriages? She gets on my carriage. Yeah, having already been stabbed. What was it the pathologist said? Well, he said she'd hardly feel it. Right. So in goes the knife. Hmm? Her legs start to go from under her. Stranger gives up his seat. She sits down and the train goes on. Look. Jess said she looked at her. But she was dying, wasn't she? Get yourself home, Joe. Go on. Where are you going? Right, next question, Kenny. Why did she switch carriages? It was crowded. Okay. Oh, she saw somebody. No, just tell him to wait there. She was being followed. Ma'am, Margaret's husband, Pavel Krzyzewski. What, on the phone? Uh, not quite. This is GCI Stanhope. This is Pavel's brother, Mr. Walter Chris. Ba Walter. Walter Kraszewski. Well, thanks for your help, Walter. So, you filed a missing persons report for your brother Pavel in March 2008? Correct. I promised my mother after I come to England, I make inquiries. So, I make this report. And? Nothing. No news. So when was the last time your family heard from Pavel? Not since 85. We get, we get postcard here. He, he says he is married to a beautiful English girl. Family is rich. We'll never hear from him again. Was that typical? No, he would always ring once a year on my mother's birthday. After 85, he stopped calling. So, you're going to find him or not? Was he a violent man, would you say, your brother? How should I know? Ask his wife. We'll find him. No, he's missing. He used to beat up his wife and then he goes missing. So you think Margaret kills her husband and dumps the body all on her tod? This is based on what? Maybe she had help.
Oh, Mr. Kenridge! Your relationship with that woman? With Margaret? No, oh, not Margaret. Marianne. Mary Ann, you named your boat after her? The woman you hardly knew? She was a beauty. You too? We were better than that. She was the love of my life. Okay. I'd have swum naked round Spence Island if she'd have asked me to. <laughs> you go ahead, pet. If the spirit moves you. Hey, you were so keen to get me off the island, weren't you? Is that where he is? Hmm. Pavel. Pavel. Told you, I hardly knew the fella. Oh, well, suit yourself. The boat's on its way. Kenny, stay with Mr. Kenridge. Keep him warm till we need him. Mum. Oh, um, I've been meaning to ask you. Did you ever, oh, way back in the day, take a poacher over to the island? Looking for bird's eggs, terns, most likely. Poacher? Hmm. Hector. Stanhope. You're Hector's lass, aren't you? That was quick. They're all moving in together. Something snapped, apparently. He hasn't told her yet, has he? What about Margaret? Shh, keep your voice down, he can hear you. Look, I know you're sore about moving, but it'll be fun. So what was all that about Hector? Oh, eons ago. Me and my dad come out here one night in a boat. This wildlife officer followed us, trying to catch him in the act. Not that Hector cared. Thrill of the chase, you see. How old were you? Oh, seven, eight. He fell out of a tree. Who did? The old man. Head for the chapel. We need to search in the chapel. Margaret. Here. Kate, I'm so sorry. Say something. Yeah? Who's that, mate? Don't know my own strength, that's the trouble. Still, no regrets. He was a bad man. He wanted her. Thought he knew what she needed. A fella like him, no chance. Who? Her husband? Freedom. That's all she ever wanted. He hated that. Kept on trying to break her. And in the end, he broke a friend instead, didn't he? A pet mouse. D. He hurt her. This man, he raped her. Aye. And Dee, well, she was never right after that. And Margaret, she blames herself. Tell him. Tell that man to leave. 
leave us alone. That's what she said. It's a station. Hello? Tell the boss we traced him. No, listen, we just dug him up. We traced Pavel Krzyzewski. What's that? Margaret's husband. No, listen, Joe. I just spoke to him five minutes ago. This knife, where do you get it? I'll ask the questions. Sit down. Is that what killed her? Sit down. Hey, I said, sit down. Pavel Krzyzewski. It's the same man. Same birthday, same place. He went to Canada to get remarried and never got round to divorcing his first wife, Margaret. Oh, two wives. No wonder he wasn't exactly busting to get in touch. When did he leave Mardle? October 84. So, when this was taken, he was long gone. So who did we just dig up, if that's not Pavel Krzyzewski? So where's Ricky now? Get hold of Kenny. I just tried him. Well, try harder. What's he... The pickup's gone. Cool. Kenny! Kenny! Oh, please, no. Oh. I want DC Lockhart found, and I want him found now! Tony, he's hurt. He's got grey hair. Have you seen him? I gave him his tea. Joe. Oh, Kenny. Kenny. Paramedic. Kenny, love, wake up. Kenny, I need you to wake up. Vera. It's all right, love. You're going to be all right. But, Kenny, I need you to stay awake. Talk to me, Kenny. Come on. Talk to me. The knife. The knife. It was his. No. No. But he recognised it. Stay awake, Kenny. He knew whose knife it was. Yes. Get in the car. So Malcolm Kenrick killed a man for Margaret. She went to the police to confess there was murder. What, and he kills her to stop her from telling the truth? Mom. What, you squeamish? Here, get over to Val Furlow. See if we can get a positive ID on that body on Spencer Island. Hey, where are you going? Come here, you! Get off me! Hey. Hey. Come here! 
it's just it would help if you need to talk to anyone with the right experience. Oh. Well, if we could just sit down, I, I think. Go through our options. Go through our options. Our options? And anything that's said will be taken. Mum? Shep? I need a support team. Are you on your own? That's right. I found Malcolm's car. Edge of the marshland. The coast road. I've got it. And get somebody up to Hollypool House. Quick as you can. Will do. So who was with you, Margaret, when you came into the station? Killer? Not yet, at any rate. Come on. I'm sorry, I can't let you touch it. Is this his son's? Ricky's? And Ricky wanted a pimp for Margaret. Yeah. Something about that woman. Well, something up in him. She made him mad, not like my lad at all. And one day he just disappeared off the face of the world. I said to myself, he'll have gone down south. It was easier that way. But you didn't report him missing. Truth is, it was easier with him gone. Thank you. Christmas. I thought I heard him on the step, his voice loud, low, like his dad's. <laughs> Few grand kiddies. That would have been nice. Stewart. No, we're having it. It's just me and the kids tonight. This. It's Finn's, their father. Mm. 
So, Malcolm, I suspect you want to know why he was after your lad. And he jumped to the wrong conclusion, obviously. There was a bad man in Mardle back in the day. Well, you pointed him out to me in the photograph. Ricky Furlow? Well, he hurt someone very close to Margaret. D, yes, uh, the rape. Oh, Margaret told you? Yes. Yeah. Well, Margaret, you see, she was convinced that history was repeating itself. Ryan, look, he has his weaknesses, OK? He, he fell in with the wrong crowd. He had 200 quid in his pocket, selling drugs, and that's not all, is it? Really? <laughs> You spinning me that lie about Margaret's violent husband? No, Margaret came to the police station to tell us about Ryan. And she wasn't alone, was she? Can we sit down, sort out our options? Hmm? Emily. Margaret said that my son raped that child. Yeah, and you didn't believe her? Oh, no, of course I didn't believe her. Do you know the truth about Margaret? Yes, I do. She was my best friend, but she couldn't handle the fact that he was my son, not hers. She was dying and she couldn't let him go. She'd sooner kill his whole future stone dead. Mm, Margaret told you she was going to the police. Yeah, sure she did. And you followed her into town. You saw her and Emily go into the police station. You saw her come out and you followed her. <laughs> she saw me on the platform. And she just walked away, and I, I called after her. Don't you walk away from me. She didn't tell you she hadn't said anything to the police, hadn't made a statement? No. That's not... She walked away, she kept her head down, and she walked away. But you had the knife. Ryan. Ryan had been showing off with it the week before. I, I confiscated it, and... I... I didn't know who was in my hand until... You stabbed her. Once. I let you... She just walked away and she got on the train and she sat down. And you got on the next train back into the city. And D? What? D? Uh, she remembered seeing me on, on, on the train, she told George. Loyal to the last. Right. You paid her a few quid to keep her happy. So whose idea was that, his or yours? Mine. So she spent the money on booze, got drunk, fell off a roof. So it all worked out in the end, didn't it? Can we do it quietly, please? Uniform on the way. But we can sit in and wait, if you like. You're Ryan. I swear to God. He didn't harm that poor girl. He told me. <sighs> you never said how it ended. What's that? 
You're seven years old on that island. It's dark. And your old man fell out of a tree. Yeah, well, that's it. What? There's no punchline. Mm. My dad couldn't walk. We stayed out all night under a rock. And this, this young fella, Malcolm it must have been, rode us back in the morning. And then my dad, when we got to the car, he reached out, took my hand, like I was in charge. And then, um, I grew up. Here you go. A little something for your Jessie. Oh, thank you. She like fudge. Um... Here he is, the walking wounded. <laughs> Not still here. Hey, bloody hell, Kenny. How's the head? Have you brain damage, Kenny? It's not permanent, is it, mate? <coughs> See, what'd I tell you? The old goat. Who's this? This is my daughter. I've got two of each. <laughs> Marley, various people I work with. Hello, love. Good for you, Kenny. Who was she? She was just an old lady who gave up her clothes. Only if you're ready. 